Data of every description will pervade our consciousness. Holograms projected beneath our eyelids. Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi, and welcome back at the museum. Today's video is about the DCC tapes, the idea that Philips had behind what length would be available for commercial purposes. Initially, we knew that when they came out, they had 45 minutes, 60, 75, 90, and even 105 minutes, although the 105 went from market or off market rather quickly. When we received these testing tapes, we found out that next to the numbers 45, 60, 75, 90, and 105, they did also request a 120 minutes. Actually, the longest tape we have here is nearly 124 minutes. And we'll show you a little bit about that, that we were actually able to record that. So why weren't all of these released? Well, we did a little bit of research and we found out that it has all to do with, of course, tape thickness, and the amount of meters that you would use on a tape. While on analog tapes, you would see a various range of anywhere between six and 16 microns. That is the thickness of the tape. And the thickness of the tape decides on how much meters you can actually get inside of a analog cassette, or in this case, a DCC shell. The interesting part is while there was great flexibility in the old analog cassette, since Philips exclusively worked with BUSF, uh, Grom videotape, that was the only tape that was ever used for DCC for various reasons. It didn't have the stick slip effect as much. Plus that tape is not shedding. That means the head will never get clogged up if you use a DCC tape. So for that reason, that Chrome videotape produced by BUSF is only available in two thicknesses. So not too many variables. One is the original 11.7 microns, and then for the 120, they went to 9.8 microns. So all of these record, it really worked. Question remains, why didn't they keep the 105 and even the 120 in market? Well, we have weighted the tapes. They're all about 40 to 43 grams, so it's not the weight, but the amount of meters of course on the longest here is nearly 180 meters on a tape when we were playing that and recording it it went all fine except for the portables the portables of course with the smaller motors and one belt had a very tough time and at some point would even shut off so i believe that that is the real reason why the longer ones went off the market it might also have something to do with the stability and dropouts, although in our testings we were able to record on all of these without any problems, but that was on a stationary deck like the 951. On the portables, the 105 and especially the 120 had problems where they would randomly just stop. And I think it's because the motor can't pull that tape. So that's my theory behind it. A little bit more about the DCC tapes. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.